Hi, folks at home. Thanks for joining me for tonight's Council Roundup. My name's Gideon Cordover. I'm one of your Kingborough councillors. And tonight it's Monday, the 18th of July, and we've just come back from a council meeting. So what is the Council Roundup? Well, this is my opportunity to share with you some of the things that I think were the highlights of tonight's meeting. But remember, you can always check out what took place on the council meetings yourselves. They're all live streamed, so you can follow them on YouTube. If you simply go to the Kingborough Council Facebook page, you'll see the link there to the YouTube live stream. And you can also go onto the council website site and see all of the minutes and agenda. So I strongly encourage you to get involved and um, follow along with what your council is doing because it affects all of our lives here in Kingborough. So the first thing that I did on the uh, meeting tonight at the public meeting was to raise some questions without notice. The first one was about weed management and the no spray register. Some people have uh, raised the point with me that you have to continually reapply for the no spray register if you choose to be on that register. And the permit uh, lasts for about two years. Well, the permit lasts for two years. So at the end of that two year period, you need to reapply. So I asked a question about whether or not council had considered extending that period. And the answer came back, you can see it on the um, live stream of the council website, which is on YouTube, you can go back and look for yourself. Uh, essentially, they want to keep a very active management over weed control in the municipality. And so there was an explanation as to why that permit period is the length of time that it is. I then asked a question about Van Moyers Road in Margate and trying to improve the safety signage for traffic management on Van Moyers Road. Van Murray's Road has been the beneficiary of some upgrades recently as a result of a grant that council was able to achieve, but there's still more work to be done, particularly in areas where the road has narrowed, become more narrow. And then the big one, I think, for today was the tree bylaw. So this is now going to be made available for public consultation. There was a, a really significant community outpouring of passion and support for maintaining Kingborough's bylaw that makes provisions for the removal of trees on private property. So many people wrote to council saying that they want to protect trees on private property and they want to make sure that Kingborough Council has a bylaw in order to make sure that people do uh, not remove trees on private property where there isn't a justification. So some of the debate around that topic revolved around the idea of safety and bushfire hazard management. So it's very important to note that when it comes to this bushfire when it comes to this bylaw about trees on private property, if a tree is deemed unsafe by a suitably qualified arborist, or if a tree has been deemed necessary to be removed as part of a bushfire management plan, then it is absolutely not covered by the bylaw. So this bylaw, the intention is to protect trees on private property, but bear in mind, it will protect trees on private property as long as those trees aren't unsafe, or as long as those trees aren't required to be removed as part of a bushfire management plan. So it's very important that we separate the issue of safety and the issue of bushfire risk mitigation from the issue of protecting trees on private property via the mechanisms of a council bylaw. Uh, I'm really pleased to see that council is trying to protect trees on private property. This is something that's so important for the ecosystem services that trees provide, and it's also very important for our own health and well-being. So, of course, we're always trying to balance these competing principles of you know the rights that an individual has on their private property to do what they want balancing that against the rights of the community to be in an area that provides good eco ecosystem services and improves our health and well-being and of course makes provision for biodiversity and habitat because after all we're living through an age of unprecedented anthropogenic climate change we are seeing already the impacts of more frequent and severe weather events, we're seeing all of the consequences play out around us of climate change. So now it's more important than ever for our biodiversity, for our area. One of the reasons why Kingborough is such a beautiful place to, to live and work and visit, one of the reasons why Kingborough has been growing so rapidly in population, people want to live in Kingborough. And part of the reason for that is because we are a very clean and green area. So I'm really pleased that the bylaws have now moved to the public consultation phase. So if you jump on the Kingborough Council website, you'll be able to have your say. And particularly, I'd be interested in hearing from you about what you think of the provisions within this tree protection bylaw. They currently say that um, uh, uh, if a tree has a circumference of greater than 80 centimetres at 1.4 metres or above ground level, so that's kind of the trigger point for this bylaw to take place, to, to come into effect, is if a tree is greater than 80 centimetres in circumference at 1.4 metres high. So I'd be interested to hear from you whether you think that that 
is an appropriate size. Maybe you think it's too big. Maybe you think it's too small. In my personal opinion, I think we should be really considering that size closely. And uh, so I'll be, I'll be keen to hear what you think about it. Secondly, the other uh, issue there is that when somebody does unjustifiably take down a tree currently, the, um, or somebody unjustifiably infringes upon the permit that they've been provided, there are various stipulations for what the penalties will be. And in this case, um, throughout the bylaw, there's one area has penalty units of, of 20 penalty unit points, another is 10. Uh, and another is five. So you can look through that yourself uh, in time, take some time, go onto the council website, download the draft bylaw, and then make your submission. A submission can be as simple as just emailing kc at kingborough.gov.tas.gov.au. I'll put the link in the description below. That's kc at kingborough.tas.gov.au. There we go. I got it. And have your say. So pop in an email that says how you feel about that bylaw and that counts as a submission, or you can follow the prompts that will be on the Kingborough Council website. So that was probably the main issue is talking about the um, talking about that tree bylaw, and I really look forward to hearing the community consultation around that as it comes to pass. But I'll just share my screen with you now so you can see um, what else was discussed. And probably the next uh, big thing that was coming up after the intention to make tree by law, uh, which is here starting on page 15 of the public council agenda, was then the cash in lieu of um, parking policy. So I'm just going to scroll down to that cash in lieu of parking policy. I hope you're not getting dizzy while I'm scrolling and scrolling. And essentially, this means that when a developer develops an area, um, particularly for commercial premises, they are required to make provision for parking because if the developer doesn't pay for parking on site, then basically that means that council has to pay for parking on that developer's behalf to make sure that we have enough parking spaces for the people in the community. And so in order to offset some of that cost, we now have a cash in lieu of parking policy. And this was first adopted in 2018. It was renewed again in 2020 with no changes. And then when it reached its next review date, I noticed in the report that in the policy, we had this discount rate of 25% if, and it says down here at 2.4, it kind of explains that a report was presented on the 20th of June in 2022 to update this cash in lieu of parking policy. However, a motion was passed to defer the decision to obtain more information about the 25% discount that may be applied to the cash in lieu amount. The reasoning behind the discount is explained in 4.16 of this report and a recommended change in the policy suggested a reduced discount. So this is something I raised at the last council meeting and then I moved to defer that matter. And the reason for that is, to me, it looked like a bit of a handout, a bit of a... Um, a cash discount being given to developers. And of course, I believe that developers in Kingborough really need to pay their fair share so that we all have access to the service provision that we deserve. Now, it's explained at 4.16, and I think it's quite a reasonable explanation that the current method of calculation for cash in lieu amounts includes that 25% discount, 25 discount based on a public benefit factor. So essentially, they, they estimate that the, the cost of building a parking space is $30,000. And if the developer pays for it themselves, that's fine. But if the developer wants council to pay for it, then they have to make a cash in lieu contribution. And in the current um, or, the, or the most recent version of this policy, there was a discount of 25%. And now that discount has been reduced to 15%. And the reason for this discount in the first place is not actually just um, as, a, as a handout to developers. Uh, it's based on a public benefit factor. So the purpose of the reduction is to recognise that the funds collected through the policy will be used for the shared parking facilities that will benefit the broader community that would normally be partly funded by public funding. So it's basically making the point that if a developer builds a shop with parking on site, it would just be for that development. Whereas if the developer pays a contribution to council to then go and create more public parking, well, the benefit is shared. It's not just for that business owner. It's not just for that developer. The benefit of that parking spot is for the greater good. And so when that 
so other people are using that car parking spot, not just the person who lives at that development. That's the argument here. And so if no discount is provided, it may deter cash in lieu payments and developers will likely opt to provide all the required parking on site. And this may be inconsistent with precinct planning initiatives to consolidate parking and increase the uptake of public transport and active travel options. So it's making the point that particularly in CBD areas, whether that's the CBD of Kingston, whether that's the CBD of Margate, there may be reasons when you're doing your precinct planning to want to avoid having lots of car parking spots taking up the land in what should otherwise be a high density area. So maybe it's not the best use of land to have parking. And so you might want to consolidate your parking at another spot. And by doing so, you might also be able to actively incentivize public transport options and people undertaking active travel options like walking or riding a bike or catching an e-scooter. So that's the theory behind why you want to provide that discount. Another term for the discount is an incentive to developers to utilize the options under the cash in lieu parking policy. But as we were told at the council meeting tonight, and you can go back and, and see the, um, the officer's contribution to that, they explained that currently this policy hasn't had much uptake so far, but we're going to wait and see and we're going to review this. Um, it's up for review next in a couple of years, but at any time, at any stage, councillors can bring this up for review again. So look, I thought it was a good way of making sure that um, developers are paying more of their fair share now than they were before. I picked up on that on that 25% discount. It's been reduced to a 15% discount and it's still providing that extra incentive for developers to make sure that we're developing our precincts with some cogent, coherent plan about where the consolidated parking should be. So let me know what you think of that. It's a really interesting and, and complex area because again, there's these competing interests taking place. There's a balancing act that's going on. We need to balance the incentives for providing active transport and, and public transport. We need to balance that against making sure that developers pay their fair share. Can both of those things coexist simultaneously? I think they can. And it's just about setting their policy settings at just the right level to make sure that we increase the economic vibrancy and sustainability of our municipality at the same time as encouraging a, a clean and green sustainable economy, making sure there are fewer cars on the road for, for those people who don't want to drive cars, that they have really good other options like public transport and active transport options. Um, but making sure, sure we have the flexibility so that uh, elderly folks or, or folks who can't, for whatever reason, ride a bike or, or engage in active transport, they have a, an option as well. So we need to always be mindful of all the different, to, uh, all the different people in our municipality, the great and complex diversity that we have, and making sure that we're making provisions for all people to enjoy, in an equal sense, to enjoy our municipality. We then received a, oh, the Civic Centre flagpole policy. So. This one is a really interesting one, and it's actually, as I recall, it's now been um, uh, deferred to clean up some of the uh, some of the more clunkier parts of the policy. But in essence, this was a, a very long and interesting discussion about the installation of a fourth flagpole at the Civic Centre. And I really strongly encourage you, if you're interested in this, to um, jump onto the the video of the council meeting so that you can see all of the nuance and policy discussion around that because it turns out that installing a new flagpole isn't quite as simple as you would think there's a lot of different things to think about and i'm pleased that council was able to have a really robust and respectful discussion about that and i look forward to it coming back to council after a few of those policy areas have been cleaned up and i'll let you watch the video yourself in order to um, see all the nuanced policy discussion, but I assure you it was a very interesting debate and a good one, I think, in a very respectful way. So that's all for my council roundup for Monday, the 18th of July. I thank you for joining me and sticking all the way through to the end of the video. If you have, more credit to you. And if you would like to get in touch, you can always do so. All our contact details are on the Kingborough Council website. Thanks again, and I'll see you at the next council roundup. Authorised by G Cordova, Tasmanian Greens Hobart.